Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on this leadership podcast. Did you know that your dog toys and your life of faith have a lot in common? You're going to find out how all this and so much more on today's leadership podcast. Hey, everybody, I'm Charity Kalser, and I'm so glad that you are joining me today. I'm so grateful that you found us, however you found us. Dean Shopshire Ministries, my dad, our incredible church, Choose Life Church in Hobbs, New Mexico. We are passionate about our relationship with God, and that means we are passionate about His Word. The Bible says in John 1-1 that the Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Let me back up. John 1-1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, our Trinity, which we're so familiar with, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is so important in our lives. Number one, we've got to acknowledge that God is love. So everything that has to do with a spirit of fear, a spirit of torment has nothing to do with with God, which means it shouldn't have a part in our life as a believer. And then Jesus is the word. And so John 1, 1, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That's Jesus. And then in uh, in John 1, 1, and then John 1, 14. And then the Holy Spirit, when Jesus left the earth, um, Um, He was sent as our comforter, as our guide, as our counselor. Jesus said, I'm leaving, but I'm going to go. And when I go, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, who's your teacher. And the Holy Spirit actually ministers to us, to the church, to those that have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, so that we can grow up through our ministry gifts, which are pastors, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists. All of those gifts are designed to help you grow up. So I'm so excited that you've taken advantage of this podcast. I'm going to teach you. That's one of the offices um, that I sit in by the help of the Holy Spirit. And so I just encourage you to listen today with expectation. You know, the Bible should be fun and faith is simple. It's easy to please God. Um, Jesus actually said, unless you come to me like a child, you're not going to take part in the kingdom. And the Bible also says in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, it's the way of the transgressor. It's those that go against the word of God that have struggle and toil in life. But as a believer, it's God's will for you to overcome, for you to experience the victory that Jesus provided on the cross. First John 4, 4 says, whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the the victory that overcomes even our faith. It's impossible. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven six to please God without faith. So faith is super, super important in our lives. I mean, that's how you got saved to begin with. You believed in your heart and you confessed with your mouth that Jesus was Lord. And if you've never done that, you can do that right now by simply acknowledging there is a God. He sent his only son to die on the cross for me so that having believed on him, I could experience everlasting life. So right out of the gate, I just want you to repeat this prayer after me. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and nothing's going to change on the outside, but on the inside, you're going to be absolutely reborn of the spirit. So just repeat this prayer. Say, God, right now, I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe all the sin of the world was laid on him so that I could be right. He was broken in every way so that I could be whole. Right now, I accept Jesus into my life, make me brand new, and from this day forward, I'll learn all I can about serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, you are born again. It's that simple. Faith is believing and speaking and agreeing with God's word. And God's word says, for verse almost everybody is familiar with, John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, that the thief comes, the enemy, there is an enemy. You know, people think everything supernatural and everything out of our control, so to speak, happens at the hand of God. No, there are two forces that exist in the earth today. The enemy who was once a, 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 an angel, he once had a residency in heaven, but he exalted himself above God and he was cast down and he became the little G, the little God of this world until Jesus came and redeemed mankind and gave us power 
power over all the power of the enemy. And so Jesus said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. It's the enemy that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came to give us an abundant life. So how do we experience that life? Well, the same way that you experience salvation, the same way that you experience eternal life, you have faith. And faith is believing and speaking, agreeing with, acting on the word of God. It's not hard to walk by faith. It's not hard to believe. You know, Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Do you know that the enemy has been defeated? First John 3, 8, the Bible says, for this purpose was the son of God manifest, who is Jesus, to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus stripped the devil of power. He he took on sin. He took on poverty. He took on the curse. The Bible says he became sin. Why? In 2 Corinthians 5, 21 so that we could be the righteousness of God in him. Jesus did all of that so that you could be victorious. And all it takes in order for you to experience that victory is faith in God. Hebrews 10 38 says the just shall live by faith. Um, I believe it's Romans 1 17. The just shall live by faith. Habakkuk 2 4. The just shall live by faith. It's our responsibility to live by faith. Again, what is faith? Believing and speaking and doing the word of God. Now, what does that have to do with dog toys. Now, you may not be a dog person, and that's okay. You don't have to be a dog person to get this illustration. You just have to be aware. You just have to know about dogs a little bit or or have ever been around a dog uh, for any length of time. I have a little Frenchie, um, uh, Pastor Greg and I, my husband have a, a French bulldog, bulldog, which we have so much fun with. And um, let me show you a picture. She actually has a ton of toys. And so this is a picture. Um, her life started with just, um, you know, this little wagon full of toys, but that grew. And so now she has a basket of toys. And this is actually just a pile of toys. Um, and so as I was studying and praying one day, the Holy Spirit gave me this illustration and I wanted to share it with you because I believe it will help you. And maybe it would be one that would be in keeping with your personality that you would want to share with other people. And so basically all of these toys represent God's promises. And what are God's promises? Well, God's promises are his word. And um, there's so many things available to us in God's word. And again, people are destroyed because they don't know what the word says. In 2 Peter 1, 4, the Bible says, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these promises, and so promises represent scriptures. They represent things in the word of God. And these have been given to us. Why? So that we could be partakers of the divine nature. See, when there's no word, there's no life. Uh, The Bible actually says in Proverbs 4.23 that the word is life and health and medicine to all of our flesh. You have to think about how did eternal life begin inside of you? Well, it began when you agreed with the word of God. Well, how does life on earth, prosperity, healing, your purpose, your peace, your protection, how does that flow continue in your life? Well, it continues through the word. So having these promises gives us access to his divine nature and gives us the ability to escape the corruption of this world. See, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Jesus said in John 16, 33, that in this world, you will face pressure, right? But be of good cheer because I've already overcome the world. Think about a professional um, a team, a athletic team, whether it's hockey or baseball or whatever. They face resistance, but that doesn't mean they lose. They can absolutely win. In they in their endeavors, they can they can meet that opposing team and come out victorious. Well, guess what? Because of Jesus, every opposition we meet, we've already been given the victory over because of what Jesus did. So yeah, we're going to face opposition, but imagine being like the New York Yankees, which that's my favorite baseball team. And don't judge, don't be mad, okay? Sometimes these things are generational. Okay? So my dad Pastor Dean was born in West Virginia, and his dad uh, was a huge Yankee fan. And so it was just kind of passed down. And you've got to just understand, like Pastor Dean has my dad, no no sons, just two daughters. And um, baseball was my dad's favorite sport. He actually um, got a full ride scholarship to play baseball out of high school, but then he was drafted. Fortunately, he never went overseas during Vietnam. He was just, as we like to joke, he worked in the clerical department, so he was a typewriter. That's kind of our joke. Um, Um, But 
Y'all, he was a Yankee fan. And so me and my little sister, we just grew up watching the New York Yankees with my dad. So don't judge if you're not a Yankee fan. I know I, 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 I've got friends that are Boston fans and so our, our arch nemesis. But sometimes I got to be honest, uh, I'll, I'll go for Boston. I got a Boston. I got Boston gear, y'all. It might seem like, you know, not right to have those both teams represented in my closet. But Okay, back to my illustration. Imagine if you're the New York Yankees and they're doing so great at the time of this recording. Like they're they're just kicking butt and I'm so excited. Um, but imagine that every team they went up against, they already had the victory. They won. They always won. They just always won. You know, when I was in high school, our basketball team uh, went undefeated for two different seasons, I believe. They won literally every single game and it was so incredible. It was like every time they met with resistance, they won. They won. They won. They won. They won. That's how the believers should live. Yes, we face pressure. Yes, we face a circumstance that doesn't agree with the word of God, but we already have the victory. Well, how do we exercise that victory? How do we go after that victory? Well, we have to understand what 2 Corinthians 1.20 says. For all of the promises of God in him are yes and and amen. See, God has already made up his mind about you. He's already made up his mind about your future. He's already made up his mind. See, a lot of people struggle with, I know that God can, but will he? Well, how do you know what he wills? You find what he wills in the word of God. Jesus already took sickness. The Bible says in 2 Peter 2.24 that by his stripes you were, 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were already healed. Jeremiah 29.11 says God's thoughts towards you are to give you a hope and a future. That Jesus, 2 Corinthians 8.9, like he was made poor so that you could be rich, right? These promises are all there and Several of those weren't in my notes. They just came out of my heart. So hopefully I gave you the right address. First Peter 2, 24, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, I believe, or 9, 8. But regardless, Galatians 3, which is in my notes, 3, 13 says, but Christ has bought us out from under the doom of that impossible system. He's already done this. He's already delivered us out of the kingdom of darkness. He was cursed so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. He has already blessed us. And Abraham's blessing is a material blessing. It's a physical blessing that that guarantees our protection, that guarantees our favor. In Genesis 12, 1 and 2, we see this blessing where God spoke to Abraham and he said, get out of your country and go to the land that I will show you. See, we've got to get out of our own understanding. We've got to get out of this worldly mentality, this victim mentality, and into the word of God so that we see what has been made available to us. Abraham had to literally get out of his family. He had to go to a new location. Location. And sometimes God will call you to that as well. He'll call you to go to Bible school. He'll call you to move to a different city. You know, people move to different cities all the time for trees, for a job opportunity, for a couple more dollars an hour. You know, God may speak to your heart to move you and your family to a different church, to get into a place of faith, to get into a place where you can grow. God spoke to Abraham and he said, get out of your family. That's a principle for us. We've got to get out of our head. We've got to get out of our culture. We've got to get out of our upbringing and get into the word of God. Because he promised, I'm going to make your name great. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to bless you. Your name will be made famous. You're going to be a blessing to other people. Guys, that's a promise, not just for Abraham. He's considered Father Abraham, like our father in the faith, which means what Jesus did gives us access, not just to eternal life, not just to an incredible relationship with the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter, who is our teacher, who is our guide, but our relationship relationship with the word of God positions us to experience this same blessing. In Psalms 35, 27, again, all of the, like all of these toys for my dog represent all of the promises. The Bible is full of good promises for you. There is not one single promise for defeat for you. In Christ Jesus, you win. In Christ Jesus, you are victorious. Psalms 35, 27 says, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Say, that's me. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God delights to see you blessed. He delights to see you victorious. Third John 2 says, beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in help just as your soul prospers. God wants you to experience supernatural 
financial prosperity. He wants you to experience supernatural healing, supernatural peace. You don't have to experience mental anguish and anxiety and torment. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. So so what do we do? Well, my dog, uh, my little Frenchie, which you can see illustrated a little bit in this in this um, picture, she goes after her toys, y'all. She goes after her promises. Now, some people don't do that. They don't get into their promises. What's so funny, or they don't get into the word of God. What's so funny is when our, our housekeepers, we have amazing people, um, you know, a, a, a service that, that cleans our house and they always like stack up the toys because she's got them all over the house. So they always stack up the toys and y'all, it's like she knows when they've been there. They come once a week and it's like she knows that they've been there because when we get home, she'll go straight for her toys and she'll start rooting around and digging in them. Now, contrasted with my parents' dog who doesn't play with toys at all. Like she can't be bothered by toys. My little sister's dog, uh, Pep, or or, uh, Little, she will not play with toys either. Guys, that's like so many believers. Am I calling believers dogs? No, I'm just using an illustration. I'm saying some believers are like my dog, my dog, Pep. We're going after the word of God. Matthew 5, 6 says, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. So you have to ask yourself, am I a believer that's going after these promises? And if you're not going after these promises, what are you going after? Like, what are you spending your time giving attention to? And I'm not saying all we do is read the Bible. All we do is pray in the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying the the, the priorities of your life protect the promises, which means when you keep first things first, Matthew 6, says, when we seek first the kingdom, well, what does it mean to seek first the kingdom? It means to seek first God's word and his promises and what he has called us to do. Romans 5, 17 says that we are called to rule and reign, that if by one man's sin, which is Adam's death reigned, how much more through one man's obedience, who is Jesus, should we now reign in life? See, Jesus came so that we could live a victorious life, that we could literally bring Matthew 6, 10, heaven to earth while we're here. Until we see him face to face, we have a kingdom mandate to bring heaven to earth. Well, we can't do that if we don't focus on the promises. So my dog, she focuses on her toys. And again, all of these toys represent a promise, right? Again, my sister's dog, my parents' dog, that you might have a dog that can't be bothered by toys, doesn't want to. And so many Christians, they don't make any effort. They may come to church, but they don't make any effort in their personal time to take advantage of these promises. What does Matthew chapter 7, uh, 7 through 12 say? Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and he who seeks finds and to him who knocks, it will be opened. What is there a man among you? If his son asks for bread, we'll give him a stone. Listen, we have a good God. He's not teasing you. He's not teasing you. He said it. He's written it. And Matthew uh, 24, 35 says that a heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. The Bible says of itself that, that it is forever settled. It is firm. God is not teasing you. He's, he's made a promise available to you and he wants you to have it. I don't ever purchase a, a, a toy for my dog and then take it back. No, once I give it to her, it is hers. And if it's written, it is forever settled and it belongs to you. And so when we ask for things, according to the word of God, we receive. When we seek, we find God. If God was playing hide and seek from us, if he was running away from us, how could we ever possibly catch him? It's not possible. So I want you to ask yourself, like, do you know about these promises? And are you going after them, so to speak, in your attention? Again, your priorities protect the promises, which means you have to, like Proverbs 4, 20 through 23 says, you have to attend to the word. You have to hearken diligently, put your eyes, incline your ears, give attention to the word. Why? So that it will produce in your life. See, the word works in our lives. And and that's really uh, the last illustration is this toy. I bought this um, most recent dog toy uh, for my pep. And um, within a few moments, she had absolutely destroyed that toy and gotten the squeaker out. 
right? And I think sometimes that's why people don't buy their dog's toys because they destroy them. But that's the whole point. The The whole point is how intellectual my dog is that she'll go right after that squeaker and she'll stick with that toy. She'll put that toy in her mouth and she'll rip it apart. See, that needs to be us where we take those promises and we refuse to let go until we see the manifestation and illustrated uh, in this, like the little squeaker on the inside. So she gets that toy. She wrestles with it until the squeaker comes out and she'll squeeze the life out of that squeaker. See, faith in God puts pressure on the word. So this represents a promise for healing. Faith puts pressure on that word. Worry puts pressure on yourself. Worry puts pressure on the doctors. Worry puts pressure on your spouse. Worry puts pressure on your boss. Worry puts pressure on the economy. Worry puts pressure everywhere where it won't produce, right? And you can't keep on worrying and get by. Worry is a sin. First Peter 5, 7 says that we're to cast all of our cares on the Lord because he cares for us. Y'all, has anything ever changed in your life for the sake of worry? It hasn't for me. Worry doesn't produce, but faith in God always produces. Mark eleven twenty two through 24 says that we should have faith in God, that whoever says to this mountain, God's not speaking to the mountain. We speak to the mountain. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things which he says, he will have whatever he says. So faith in God puts pressure on the word. Just like my dog grabs this toy. What is this toy in the life of a believer? It represents a promise. So I find out what does God's word say about raising my kids? What does God's word say about my healing? What does God's word say about my prosperity? What does God's word say about my purpose? I get into God's word. I find out what the promise is and then I hold on to it and I squeeze it. I put pressure on it, so to speak, with my faith. Well, how do I do that? How do I How do I um, put pressure on the word of God? You know, an old denominational song that many people use used to sing growing up in church was standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my savior. I don't know it exactly. I wasn't raised in a denominational church, but there was an old school song called standing on the promises of God. Same thing, standing on the promises of God, faith pressuring the word of God. How does it work? Well, think about elevators, okay? And how do elevators have to do with dog toys? Well, they don't. This is a new illustration. Track with me here. We're transitioning, right? So what happens when you hear the word of God, the purpose is that it would get down into your heart, that it would move. See, faith is not of the head. Faith is of the heart. So it drops down into your heart. That's the goal, that it doesn't stay up here. Now, why does it get stuck? Why does the word, when you hear it or when you see it, you hear it preached or you see it for yourself, why does it get stuck here? Well, there's many instances why it gets stuck, meaning it doesn't drop all the way down to your heart. It doesn't become real to you. Um, And we can see these three reasons why it gets stuck in Mark 4, 14 through 20, when what in what is called the parable of the sower. Um, Jesus said, the sower sows the word, meaning a pastor, a leader, or you yourself gets into the word of God. And there's three types of soil where the word will not produce the wayside, the thorny, and the rocky soil. It's only the good soil where the word will take root. And what do we mean by take root? It becomes real to you. See, until it's real to you, it won't produce for you or through you. And so the three things that that this parable, and, and, and look into it for yourself, the three things that this parable says will keep you um, from having the word drop down into your heart, which is how we put pressure on it in order for it to produce, is carnality, just being distracted, um, persecution. Well, you know, so-and-so says that that's not true. So-and-so says prosperity, that's a cult, you know, that healing that that passed away or tongues is of the devil, whatever. Persecution, you've got to get into the word of God for yourself. And you've got to just down in your heart, know, you know what? This bears wi- this bears witness. That phrase means like, this gives me a good feeling on the inside. This gives me like, like warm butter on a hot piece of bread. Hallelujah. It gives me that kind of feeling, right? Well, carnality, just being distracted, like focusing on other things, 
will keep that word from being real to you. Persecution, paying more attention to what other people are saying and what other people are doing, that will keep that word from being real to you. Strife, not walking in love, taking on offense, like giving in to any any unforgiveness that will keep the word from being real to you. So once you eliminate those three things, the word, the more you hear it, it will become more and more real to you. Joshua 1, 8 says, meditate on this word and you will make your way successful and prosperous. So what happens? We hear the word of God. That's like me giving my dog a toy, right? You hear the promise and then it's your job to work with that and she'll work with it. She'll squeeze it. She'll come uh, go do something else and she'll come back to it, right? That's what we do. We we spend time in the word, maybe in the morning. We Maybe we listen to a message or a podcast like this on our way to work. Maybe we've got a Christian book that we're reading. So so we're 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 spending time with these truths, right? And we and we keep at it. And then before we know it, it becomes more real to us than what we feel and see. It's just like whenever you're designing a home or an architect is laying out plans. You know, what all starts in the mind, what all starts as an idea, it becomes more and more real as you work with it, as you take action in it, and then it manifests. A remodel of a house or a redesign design or the construction of a brand new building or a brand new church. So you work with the word and it gets down in your heart and it becomes so real to you. And it's literally like elevators back and forth. So you hear it, you let it drop down into your heart, and then it comes out of your mouth because Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. So your mouth, my mom says it this way, Pastor Kathy, your mouth will always tell you. Your mouth will always reveal where you are. So if it's real in your heart, because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So when you've let that word become real on the inside of you, then when you're pressed with a symptom, when you're pressed with lack, when you're pressed with a problem with one of your kids, when you're pressed with fear or or a circumstance at work, when the word, when the word is hidden in your heart. And what did David say? Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. What did Paul said? Anything that's not a faith is sin. So we don't want to sin and we don't want to step out of faith because faith pleases God. So we put our heart, we pack our heart, like Pastor Dean says, we pack our heart full of the word of God. We give enough time to that word that it takes the elevator from our head all the way down into our heart and it becomes so real and we're agreeing with it and we're speaking it to ourselves. Yes, by his stripes, I am healed. Himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That becomes so real on the inside of you that then it becomes a part of what you say and death and life is in the power of the tongue. And like I referenced earlier, Mark 11, 23 and 24, you will have whatever it is you say. You're not going to have what somebody else says about you unless you agree with it. And so we we let the word, we basically let the word ride the elevator of our innermost being on a regular basis. And guess what happens? We get the victory. Now, this doesn't look like victory to most, but this is victory for my dog. And this is victory for me. Now, this particular toy had, had two squeakers, right? God's word is so rich. There's so much in it. So she got the one squeaker, out and she just puts it, you know, the little plastic that makes the noise, the noise component. She gets it out and she ch- ch- toys with it until there is nothing left. And see, that's what Jeremiah said. I believe it's Jeremiah fifteen sixteen in the Bible. He said, your words were found and I did eat them, right? So then she came back. There was another squeaker in here. This is victory, right? You can see the effect of her working with this toy. You can see it because she got every ounce of life out of it. See, that's your call as a believer to seek first the kingdom. What's the kingdom? The word, his manifestation, his rule, his reign, his dominion. See, I can't bring the kingdom to pass for you, for your family. Your pastor can't bring the kingdom to life for you in your business, in your marketplace. That's your responsibility. That's why Deuteronomy 30, 19 is so important. God has set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, you have to choose. You have to choose first and foremost to get hungry, to get hungry, to be like my dog, to be excited about the word. Man, stir yourself up. Just make a decision every single day. And guys, it's not always about your feelings. When you choose right, the feelings, however, will come. You know, you 
may be, uh, you know, shopping or, 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 or doing something that's a blessing to somebody like for their birthday. And, and in the moment, you may not feel it. Like you may not feel anything. You may, uh, 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 in one way, honestly feel obligated. You got a, an invite to a birthday party. You know, you feel obligated to maybe go to the party and and to bring a gift. You don't want to come empty handed. And so you may not have the feelings of making an investment in that person's life, but you know it's the right thing to do. And what happens? You go to the party, you bring the gift, they open the gift, they're blessed. And what happens? The feelings come. See, you did the right thing and the feelings came. So many believers are waiting for the feeling to act. No, I don't wait for the feeling to act. I act because I know what the word of God says. I know that it's right. As a righteous person, as a just person, it's right to walk by faith. Not because I feel it, not because of all the circumstances, not because all the stars have aligned, but because he sent his word and his word delivers. His word has the answers. So you have to determine, I'm going to be hungry for the word. I'm going to set a system or a plan in motion for my life. Maybe I listen to the word in the morning as I'm getting ready. I'm listening to the word in my car, driving to work. I've set aside time to study. I don't miss church. I'm hungry for the promises. I'm hungry and I'm humble and I go after those things. And then once I hear a promise and I look at my life and I say, okay, that's not real in my life. Then what do I do? I got to work with it. I got to get it from out of my head to something that I've just heard to now something that is real to me. No excuses, no distractions, no carnality, no offense, uh, no being concerned about what mama and all them say. No, I'm going to focus. That's what my dog does. She focuses on that. This is the promise. You focus on that thing. You speak that thing. You read that thing. You study that thing. You rip it apart, so to speak, until it becomes manifested in your life. And you don't take no for an answer. We don't take no for an answer. Why? Because all the promises are already yes. What does 2 Corinthians one twenty say? All the promises are already yes. So listen, walking by faith, y'all, is as simple as a relationship that a dog has with toys. This is the promise, your effort, you abiding in the vine. John 15, one through five says you abide in the vine. What is that? You abide in the word. The word is where you put the pressure. Don't put the pressure on yourself. Don't put the pressure on your job. Don't put the pressure on your performance. Don't put the pressure on your spouse, on your kids. Where should you apply the pressure? Man, my dog applies the pressure to that toy until she gets the victory. We apply the pressure of the, we apply the pressure of our life to the word. Man, I think about the word. I meditate on the word. I mull it over like I rehearse it over and over in my heart. It comes out of my mouth. And guess what? It will show up in your life. And so it moves from my head to my heart, to my mouth, to my feet. And now there are signs following. The Bible says that signs will follow believers. So when you believe the word of God and you stand on the word of God, it will hold you up and it will produce. I love you guys. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next time.